Finance Minister Enoch Kondongwa now will deliver his medium-term budget speech in late October. The expectation is that the state of the country's finances will make for a very sorry reading. A lack of reliable power from ESCOM is hampering the economy, amongst other things. Add to that that it translates poor rail performance and you have an economy that struggles for growth. How then can unemployment be dented, especially among the young, uh, where it is as high as 60%? And to put this uh, question and perspective to Crystal Duncan Williams, who joins us as the project lead at Youth Capital. Crystal, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, a, a number of variables and challenges facing the country's economy, which will make it difficult for finance minister to even find a balance because the need is so dire and the fiscal uh, simply cannot um, maintain it. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, absolutely. I think there's um, lots of... Uh, programs vying for for money from from an ever shrinking uh, budgetary pie um and so the minister of finance does have a difficult job um you know it's the first time in my memory that they've just announced that he's going to only be making the announcement on the first of november um which is you know almost two weeks later than than usual and i think it's because um it's a real is walking a balancing act um but there are some key programs that we need to keep funding um for both the stimulus of the current economy and for the stimulus of the future economy of south africa yeah, let, let's look at the benchmark maybe of prior programs that had been introduced. There were many promises made that jobs will be created for young people in particular mm. and uh, the uh, investment conferences that have been held notwithstanding the trade missions that the executive had embarked on just to lobby for more uh, investment and also for aid. Just recently with the BRICS, the Chinese having committed 167 million rand donation in exchange of course for many other lucrative contracts. Contracts. Uh, where do you, do you, you see South Africa lacking in the implementation of p programs if we ben benchmark with the uh, uh, prior programs that had been implemented, Crystal? So I think you know there's there's two sides on the on the supply side. Young people are just not work ready. Um, youth capital has spent um, quite a bit of time since last year talking to small business owners, and you'll hear again and again that young people just don't have the skills they need for the workplace. So you have young people without any experience. You know, eight in ten unemployed young people have never had a job. Um, and then on the demand side, you have an economy that's just not growing. So you need people with money in their pockets to spend in the economy, to stimulate the economy, along with all the other infrastructure issues that you mentioned, like electricity and, and transnet and things like that. Um, and we're not getting it right on, on either side of, of, of that. Um, and so programs like the Basic Education Employment Initiative that puts young people in schools, um, you know, it's two birds with one stone. You get young people getting work experience and you're getting schools across the country, all public schools across the country, getting extra hands in the classroom to assist um, learners, many of whom we know from the last poll study, cannot read for meaning, and we're doing really poorly on that front globally. Yeah, but I mean, we all, always talk about this, and it's almost become rhetorical because uh, you, the skill sets that are required for the marketplace uh, may not be something that young people in general possess. But we also see a shortage mm -hmm. of uh, medical personnel. Just recently, there was a strike of young doctors, some who are unemployed or they are not able to be placed in the public service for them to then um, earn their, their credits, etc. Well, where do you think the, the mismatch is? Are the skills there or they're not locatable? or uh, we just simply have the wrong skill sets for the marketplace? I mean, clearly, if you look at a medical profession, we are in dire need of more doctors. I know there's some provinces that, you know, only have one or two specialists in, in, in recent history, um, and, and the public health system is, is struggling. So there again, you have, in real terms, the money given to the Department of Health has actually declined over recent times. And the only way you're going to get more money into coffers is to have a, an economy that's got an increased um, growth rate, and that's really where we're struggling. Um, and so, you know, programs, even if they're short-term uh, government programs like the basic Education Employment Initiative puts some money into young people's pockets that they spend back into the economy. Um, and so beyond just the first work experience and the extra hands in the classroom, you have young people who suddenly have some money in their pockets. And through Youth Capital's campaign, Fund Our Futures, we've been hearing from young people and a number of them tell us stories of how having that extra money in their pockets helped them to create the um, side hustle, grow their side hustle into more of a small business. Now we need more of these kinds of on, on enterprises um, and young people just don't have the right support for that. So, you know, it's all it's all really connected. Um, things like public services, like the health system, um, 
I really need more money to be able to pump into it, but we need an economy that's growing to be able to have more money. And and a key factor to that is getting the majority of the population or working age population into some kind of income generation. And that's really where we're struggling at the moment. Yes. And so Crystal, Duncan, Williams, just before we let you go quickly, what kind of a um, professional young person are you looking for? One that maybe wants to um, scale in their business or uh, they, they just require a bit of support? be it networks or resources, uh, a mm, job opportunity? Mm. What kind of criteria mm. do they need to meet? Yeah, so I think it depends on the sector. Um, but, you know, looking at the, the Basic Education Employment Initiative, you have young people. It's, again, there's no one size fits all year. Young people are diverse. And we need to give young people different pathways into different careers or, or income generating opportunities. So, you know, something like working in a school exposes you to a range of skills. It's not just in the classroom. It's admin, it's filing, it's basic computer literacy, um, conflict re resolution between learners in the classroom. We hear about that a lot. And then having pathways out of that, you know, saying to young people, there are some uh, small pilots with a, pro with a project now that's looking at which young people do have the desire to be entrepreneurs, you know, can think on their feet, have a good business model, have a good way of thinking about how to generate some income. And then you have other young people who want to go on to study teaching. And we need to give young people information to be able to make that informed choice. As you mentioned, network, social capital, social connections is so important here that young people are exposed to different career paths and different, and different resources um, and can make an informed choice about something that they're good at, something that they're skilled in and something for which there's a demand for them market. All right. Thank you indeed. A project lead at Youth Capital, Crystal Duncan Williams, talking to us about the challenges young people face, but also that there are interventions in place. Uh, if you reach out, there are a number of professionals who can mentor or even give you access to that uh, uh, opportunity you've been seeking.